All right, this is Story of the World. This is about the marvelous city of Tenochtitlan. We don't know where the Aztecs first came from, but we do know that as they wandered through Central America, they fought battle after battle with the other tribes who lived there. Whenever they won, they forced the conquered tribes to give them food, money, and soldiers for their army. The Aztecs grew richer and stronger, but they still had no homeland. As they roamed through the highlands of Central America, the Aztecs came to the edge of a wide lake. The edges of the lake were soft and marshy, filled with reeds. Little islands dotted its surface. On one of these islands, a large cactus grew. And on the cactus sat an eagle holding a snake in its talons. When the Aztec priests saw the eagle, they cried out, it is a sign from the sun god. He wishes us to settle here. His divine power will be with us if we build our capital city on the island of the eagle. The Aztecs wanted to please the sun god, but when they launched their canoes and paddled over to the island, they found that much of it was soft and muddy. How could they build a city on marshy land? The Aztecs were determined to find a way. And so they hauled basketfuls of dry earth and stones from the land around the lake and dumped the earth onto the muddy beaches. They pulled basketfuls of mud up from the lake bottom and filled in the pools and swamps. They cut poles from the trees surrounding the lake drove the poles down into the bottom of the lake and attached reed mats to the poles. Then they filled the fenced in areas with more dirt and mud. Slowly, the island became larger and drier. The Aztecs built more and more houses in their new city. They named it Tenochtitlan. Today, the lake where Tenochtitlan stood is called Lake Texcoco. More and more people came to live in Tenochtitlan. Even though the island was not very big, this floating city had over 100,000 Aztecs living in it. More parts of the lake were filled in so that stone buildings could be raised. Canals edged with stone channeled the water away from the foundations of the city. The canals also acted as streets. Often the Aztecs traveled through their capital city by canoe. Smaller cities grew up around the edge of the lake. The people who lived in these cities grew corn, squash, tomatoes, and beans, paddled canoes full of food over to Tenochtitlan, and sold the food to the city dwellers. But the Aztecs of Tenochtitlan didn't rely on the shore for all their food. They learned how to grow crops in the lake. They wove reeds into huge mats and floated these mats in the water. They covered the surface of the mats with dirt and planted seeds in the dirt. When the plants sprang up, their roots grew down through the dirt, through the mats and into the water. Sometimes the roots reached all the way down into the bottom of the lake. These crops never died from drought or sun. They always had plenty of water. Some Aztecs even built small houses on their floating garden mats. The Aztecs ate food from the lake as well. They caught fish, but they also cooked and ate water lizards, salamanders, frogs, and fish eggs. One Aztec delicacy was cakes made out of algae that had been pressed and dried. For meat, they hunted the ducks and birds that swam on the lake's surface as well as deer and rabbits that roamed on the lake's shores. On special occasions, they drank fermented cactus juice. The Aztecs also learned how to make a brand new food, chocolate. The rich dirt around the lake was a perfect place to grow cacao trees, small fruit trees that bear fruit like melons, each almost a foot long. When the purple fruit of the cacao tree turned brown, the Aztecs would pick the fruit and scoop out the insides, but they weren't after the pulp inside the fruit. They wanted the seeds, each cacao fruit might have 30 or 40 seeds in it. The Aztecs pounded these cacao beans into a fine powder, boiled them with corn flour into a soupy paste, strained the paste into a thin brown liquid, and then added vanilla and honey to it. The result, chocolate. This chocolate was probably bitter and grainy, not smooth and creamy like the chocolate we have today. Today, chocolate makers add milk, sugar, and extra butter to chocolate to make it sweeter and softer but the Aztecs didn't think their chocolate was bitter. Chocolate was one of their favorite foods. Rich people drank it from golden cups. Cacao beans were as valuable as gold. The Aztecs even used them for money. Chocolate, they thought, was food worthy of the gods. Tenochtitlan could only be reached by three raised earthen roads that ran through the lake. And between each road and the gates of the city was a moat. Usually this moat was filled with heavy logs that allowed horses and carts to cross over into Tenochtitlan. But when the Aztecs were at war, they rolled the logs out of the moat. Then no one could cross into the city on foot. And Aztecs needed to be able to defend their city because they fought with everyone around them. Even though they had a beautiful capital city and plenty to eat and drink, 
They raided nearby tribes and kidnapped men, women, and children to sacrifice to their gods. The Aztecs were prosperous, but they were also hated by the other tribes of Central America. Today's STEM project is to create a chinampa, or a floating Aztec garden. Aztecs were located in central Mexico. Their capital city was Tenochtitlan, which had a population of over 250,000 people. The city had marketplaces, paved roads, and palaces. There were also five lakes and extensive wetlands in the Valley of Mexico. The Aztec built floating gardens by weaving sticks together to create a giant raft. The giant rafts were surrounded by water canals. The canals enabled drainage of the wetland soil during the seasonal rains. During the dry seasons, the water could infiltrate the floating gardens from the canals, the soil easily absorbing the water. These gardens were up to 300 feet long by 30 feet wide. They piled mud from the bottom of the lake to the top of the raft to create three feet of soil. The floating gardens were anchored by willow trees. They planted beans, squash, tomatoes, peppers, and corn throughout the year. Music